Okay, guys, so we're going to start with the third movement because it's the most tricky and we want to make sure we have plenty of time to work on it so that it gets really settled before the performance. And I want you to go ahead and play it through for me and I'm going to listen, make notes, and then we'll talk about details. <laughs> and I'm going to record you as I always do, right? Then you can listen to yourselves and especially for Aram's sake, he needs to know what it sounds like in front, since his perception of what's going on is always from behind. So this will enable him to hear it as it sounds from the front. Okay. basically balanced, but not in the way you might think. Um, it's not so much about whether or not the piano's too loud or the flute's not loud enough, but a lot of it has to do with whether or not you're hearing the music in the light layers. Oh, I see. So that's kind of what's happening. It's a little bit some old habits, which of course are still new to us and mm -hmm. aren't working together. But I'm missing a lot of low support, especially in places where the piano is the harmony, mm -hmm. and the most noticeable is all of this, all of this in here. I didn't, I hardly heard any of these low notes in this whole section, even something like this. Oh, okay. Exaggerate in the opposite direction. Instead of mm -hmm. pianistically feeling as though you're <laughs> that kind, of, so that you're going that way, try to feel the harmony. So that everything is being built, and when you have these downbeats with low octaves, just because you have to come up and do this, don't ignore the low notes. He needs it, you need it, Okay. the music needs it. All right? Awesome. Okay, so let's try just the pick, the pick up to 83, and remember the dynamic that starts is pianissimo, and then little by little, and I'll, this time I'll turn your page, I know that's hard. Oh, thanks. Okay, try it. It says here, sempre con pedal, right? Sempre using. Using it, not just holding it open. So even here, even here, you want to just change it a little bit. Okay, mm -hmm. otherwise you're, you're on the right track. Let's do an experiment. Can mm -hmm. we just do exactly what you just did and just play harmony? Sure. Don't, don't play the subdivided rhythms, just play the harmony. That's basically what the music is, right? Mm -hmm. But in order for that to work, two things have to happen. You have to feel it that way. So the musical meter is what? It's it's whatever the harmonic meter. Exactly. Is. And in this case, it's in one or bigger. Right. Right. So you and that's what's making him feel buoyed up by your support. Now, if you just let those harmonies separate into the rhythms that are written there, then you're going to be fine. Okay. All right. And okay. just use your good ear to not let it get too thick. Mm -hmm. or muddy, all right? Okay. Try it now. Hopefully it'll feel the same. Going 
up rather than starting mm -hmm. from the root. That's all. Now, his line, uh, Daniel, do for me the pick up to 93. Okay? So just play your left hand with him there. Mm -hmm. Pick up to 93. Right, now, what's the most interesting harmony in that phrase? Uh, this thing. Um, right? So it was, uh, Where's the line going? Ah. What a moment, right? So what's going to define that that note is really... Because you're doubling him here. What is it that defines the specialness of it? Right. So when you're trying to not build up too much sound so that the balance stays good, then you have to be sure that you still feel the shape of the phrase okay. with that arrival. Oh, I see. So it's, that's what I'm talking about layering. Uh -huh. This piece is the ultimate challenge for that. From both, especially in this transcription, because you are often not in the, exactly the same register that the violin is. And so, therefore, the piano part was written to go with the violin register. And I think it works beautifully with flute. I don't have any problem with it. And this edition is very well done. So that's not the issue. The issue is that it is a different sound. <laughs> Mercado, do you feel? No, it's also a different rhythm. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Okay, and that's part of what's throwing it off. It doesn't quite start together, right. and the intention is not quite the same. So talk, talk between the two. What would you like? I'm just holding the F sharp a little longer, so okay. that, you know, so the 16 note is it's actually 16. Yeah. Okay. How about the triplet right after? I, I rush that, and I'll, I'll take responsibility. I think. Okay, that's one for Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, what I'm interested in is the articulation, is the intention of where you're going. Not so much that you rushed it or you were this or that. Not, that's not what I'm interested in. You guys will work that out. You're good okay. enough. But your articulation is not the same. Hard to do, right, with these two uh -huh. instruments. Back and forth one more time. Mm. All right, put it together, see what happens. Yeah. That's one way to rehearse, right? Just take it apart, play ping pong. You play, he plays, you play, he plays, and just listen to the differences. Once you take it apart, you're listening so carefully to one another, put it back together and see if your minds meet. Where's your loudest playing? Here? Is this going to work on the flute to be at your very loudest here? Probably not, so be at your longest with a good articulation. Instead of which sounds trite on our instrument. Maybe on the violin, you know, by the frog, really getting in there, it would work, but it's not going to work for us. And then, you know, when you're in unity, nobody has to play their loudest as much as you need to play your tightest. transcription, right? This is transcription for you. So we have to decide, are we, do we want to play in the character of what the original instrument was, like the violin, or do we want to bring out the characteristics of the instrument that it's being transcribed to, like the flute? And what are the differences for that? What would you say is the difference between uh, hearing this, and I'm sure you've listened to um, the violin version of this, What's, what would you say is the difference between that and the flute version? The low register, definitely. The, the violin can definitely project way better, 
than we do. Exactly, the low parts. How do we support that? Because you're right, we can do things like vibrato <clears throat> on the violin to bring out a certain note to cut through a texture that may be in the piano. Right. Okay. So one of the things that we can take a look at is, are there notes that you can vibrate and change your vibrato to me even be a little bit wider so that we hear it through there? The, that's one way that you can bring attention to your, to your part without having to think about trying to play just louder, right? Because originally, ultimately, it's not going to be about loudness. We can talk about volume of sound, but that, that implies a quality of what we're looking for, which is good. So this is all in the concept of a forte espressivo, which is what we find as violinists to be challenging. We have all of these massive passages that are pretty loud with not a whole lot of necessarily hairpins to them, shaping right. from the composer. So what do we do? You know, obviously he's saying that this is the loudest part, our answer is in measure 49. But we want to see if we can think about where the patterns go. So that we can think about this as one, two, three, right? Because it's a rhythmic pattern that's ta, 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 ta. Mm -hmm. Ta, 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 ta. Because this is, was ta, 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 ta. Mm -hmm. So that this is where that pattern actually starts. So when we have a pattern of three, I want this to go up more. And pattern of, you know, one is mm -hmm. going to be here, two is going to be there, three, a little bit more like terrace to dy dynamics, like Baroque music, but to go up in these steps because then we feel the lift of the, of the note, okay? Because we're going from D to which direction? We're going up to a G, and right from a G, G to a B. Mm -hmm. So he keeps pulling us up musically, right? right? So if we can feel that, that you're going to do that type of layering, I think that you might find that you can have a lot more um, different types of dynamic balance in this section, okay? more direction to it, okay? Because you're really kind of following what the line is, not just playing together. You guys are really now thinking dynamically, where do you want to take us as an audience? We could find the spots where, like, uh, my teacher was saying to just let it relax. Yeah. For, for instance, like 31. Um, 31 should be like in the column. Right. I'll go to the major section, like, just pull it back. Right, that one too. Actually, at 83, that section, I wasn't able to hear the rhythm. Oh, like, okay. I didn't know what to change. You know what I mean? Oh, like, okay. Like, you have all these, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 16 notes. I, I wasn't sure uh, oh, when to change, so I don't know if you could, could pick me like, more bass or more. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, can, can we try that, actually? Yeah, let's try that. Wrong. Started and I'm like trying to pull it back. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds great. I love the 
energy, everything about it is terrific. It is not a mark of failure to use the short stick on this nine foot concert grand. Oh, great. In this hall with flute. <laughs>